Hello all, so in this video we're going to continue using ticks uh, and LaTeX to construct some diagrams and actually in this video we're going to use uh, LaTeX to construct some Venn diagrams. Now just be aware that there is actually a package which is called Venn diagram which will be able to do this in pretty much half the time and is actually far neater to use. However, just for the sake of illustration, I'm just going to show you how you can do it in LaTeX as well. So let's first of all start by creating some coordinates. Okay, so these are coordinates which I'm going to be referring to quite a lot. Um, so it just makes sense that I don't have to keep defining them every single time. So C1 is going to be circle 1, and I'm going to pop that at the coordinate 0, 0. The next one is going to be my coordinate C2, so that's going to be my second circle, and I'm going to put that at the coordinate 1.5, 0. Oops. There we go. Okay, and my last coordinate, so my last circle, um, and of course these are centers of circles, so I'm going to call that C3, and I'm going to pop that at uh, 0.75, negative 1.5. Now again, if you're not sure why these numbers are the case, it's because I've actually sat down and plotted this before. I found that plotting them in these particular locations gives me the circles that I want. But of course, it's sometimes just a case of just fiddling around with the different coordinates, just sort of seeing exactly where the circles are going to come up. Okay, the other thing which I am also going to... Um, I am also going to define is uh, the rectangle. So basically, I need a universal set around the outside. So I'm going to call this um, coordinate r1, which is going to be the beginning of the rectangle, I'm going to pop that at negative 1.75, uh, negative 3.25. And r2 is going to be the last coordinate, and I'm aware that I've spelt coordinate incorrectly up here, so just give me a second whilst I change that. Coordinate, that's better. Okay, and I'm going to call that r2, that's going to be the top right-hand corner of my universal set, and I'm going to put that at 3.25 and 1.75. Now again, you may sit down, you may come up with slightly different coordinates to give a slightly different effect, okay? So just sit around, sit down, fiddle around where the coordinates are going to be at. But these are ones that work for three-set um, Venn diagram. Okay, so first of all, what I'm going to do is now label um, the relative coordinates of each of my sets, okay? So if I just quickly show you what my sets are going to look like, so I'm going to draw, using the center point C1, a circle which is 1.25 in radius. Notice the way that I'm defining that circle. Uh, you could absolutely go for the square brackets and then radius equals, or you could just do how I've done just in the parentheses, just however many units they are going to be, because we understand that there's going to be a grid here as well. Okay, I'm going to draw my second circle in a similar kind of way. So draw, if I can spell. Okay, second circle, C2. That's also going to be a circle of 1.25 in radius. And my last circle, don't forget the semicolon, is going to be centered at C3. That's also going to be a circle. And that's also going to be 1.25 in radius. Okay, so if I just recompile this, let's see what we've got so far. So you can see th three overlapping circles and that works quite nicely. Um, I'm also going to draw my universal set around the outside. Okay, so I'm just going to go draw. In this case, I'm just going to draw a rectangle starting at the bottom left, which is R1. Rectangle to top right, which is going to be R2. Okay, so you should be able to see an empty Venn diagram like so. So that's ready to be filled. Maybe I might want to label what these Venn diagrams are. Okay, so I'm going to do that uh, down here. So I'm just going to do coordinate and I'm going to pop a label. Uh, in this case, I'm going to actually label the universal set. So I'm going to go label equals. Uh, it's going to be on the left. So I want it to be on the top left up here. Um, and it's going to be called Xi. So fortunately, because I'm using LaTeX, I can just go backslash and Xi as long as I'm in math mode. And this is going to be a coordinate called R, and I'm going to put that at negative 1.75 and 1.5. And again, there's different ways that you can do this, different ways you can define this. But if I just basically put a coordinate at negative 1.75, 1.5, you basically bring up the universal set label up here as such. Okay. If I also want to label each of my different sets, so let's go, for example, coordinate, uh, and let's put my label equals above and left, and I'm going to go text BF, and I'm going to call this one rugby, let's say, because I'm referring to three different sets, maybe rugby, cricket, and football. Um, I'm going to call this one A, I'm going to pop this one at negative 0.5 and 1.1, and if I recompile that, let's see what we get. Oops, there's a mistake, because I haven't spelt label correctly. 
Okay, so there we go. So rugby gets labeled as this set. It's a little bit big, but I'll show you how to rectify that in just a second. And actually, if I just pull in cricket, uh, so if, yeah, cricket and football just underneath here. Okay, so just again, defining in a similar kind of way, recompile that. Again, I get football, cricket and rugby as such. Okay. Um, all right, so what could I do with this then? Well, you notice, first of all, that the rugby, the football and the cricket is way too big relative to the rest of the diagram. So just to illustrate what I can do, if I come up to where it says begin ticks picture, and if I put a square bracket next to it, I can actually change the scale of my diagram. So maybe if I change the scale to be 1.5, so I make the overall diagram a little bit bigger, but then the text is all relative to that as well. Actually, I've put 1.1 one, one here, so it looks as if it's uh, in three coordinates. That's it, it's 1.1. 1. 1. Maybe then rugby with the same height as uh, football, pretty much. Yep, that looks a little bit better, okay? And again, I can come up here, I can right click, I can save image as. If you stick around to my last video, I'll actually show you how you can export this with a little bit more parameters. So for example, you can export it as a PNG document with a transparent background. And I'll show you how to do that at the very end if you stick around for my last video. But for the moment, that kind of gives me a decent Venn diagram. Just to show you another thing which I can also do, maybe I might want to clip um, and just sort of highlight a section, maybe the overlap. Now, like I say, there is a there is a package out there called Venn Diagrams, and I strongly encourage you to use that if you want to go down that route. But just to show you, it is technically possible if you're willing to sit around and play around with Tick's picture. If I use the command clip, all that's basically going to do, if I maybe clip C1 and then circle of 1.25, so literally this circle up here, the rugby circle, what that's going to do is by creating a clip, it's literally just going to highlight everything inside that. So everything outside that I've already drawn remains, but basically everything new that I draw will basically be within this circle. Okay, so if I just illustrate that with you with the fill, and maybe if I fill C2, um, the circle, which is 1.25, then basically, instead of plotting the full circle, circle two, which I believe is football, okay, instead of plotting that entire circle, it's only going to plot the region of the circle that falls within this circle here. So that's what the clipping mask basically does. It literally just masks out everything outside. It's a bit like using masking tape. And it basically says, okay, I'm only going to let you plot anything within this circle here. That's what the clip is going to do. So if I recompile that, you can basically see that that section of the circle, instead of the whole circle being highlighted or shaded in, it's only shading in the region of the circle that's been masked out by the C1. So that can be quite useful. Again, if you want to get into this and if you're using Venn diagrams, I strongly encourage you to use a Venn diagram package because it's very quick and easy to do. But just to show you, it is technically possible in ticks as well.